Hello pilots and welcome to Out of Art Gaming's Faction Breakdown. In this series we'll be looking at each ship in a given faction and discussing its base stat line, the role of the ship in the game, notable pilots and the pros and cons of each ship. We'll be looking firstly at the standard ships. So these are ships that have been re-released in version 2, then we will look at the extended ships in a later video. But first up we'll be discussing the Galactic Empire. This is my favourite faction and in fact the faction I started with back in version 1. So let's jump straight in and see exactly what ships you get in the standard version 2. Now when talking about standard ships for the Empire there's no better place to start than the Thai LN Fighter. This is the mainstay of the Galactic Empire and one of the most iconic ships in all of Star Wars, possibly sci-fi in general. Now, seen as many as the baseline ship that most other ships are compared to, it has a modest stat line with just two attack, three evades and three hull. No shields on this, as we know the Empire wanted more for less. Now its action bar is fairly modest with just focus, evade and barrel roll, but this isn't a bad thing. In the movement dial it's solid if not inspiring, however it does have access to the white 1 hard and 2 speeds of K turns in the speed 3 and 4. This ship can also speed forward rapidly using its white 5 straight manoeuvre. Despite its modest amount of health it is backed up by a good number of evade dice and when flown in a swarm of TIE fighters it can whittle down an unsuspecting foe. With the TIE Fighters you do get access to an impressive 15 different pilots ranging from your Initiative 1 Academy pilot all the way up to the very impressive Initiative 5 Howl Runner. Now this ship is seen by many as the filler ship when you have points remaining or as best used in a swarm of 4 or more TIE Fighters. Using their superior numbers in a swarm to strip tokens and cause damage through sheer weight of fire. With the introduction of 2.5, the TIE Fighter has seen a resurgence amongst Empire players for its ability to quickly capture objectives and provide a high ship count with relatively low cost, meaning you're not bleeding points very quickly. With the name pilots having abilities ranging from swarm support to all-out offensive, you can run some very interesting loadouts. Now looking at some of the notable TIE Fighter pilots, we do have Night Beast. Now, with the ability to perform a focus action after you fully execute a blue maneuver, this is incredible, as it allows you to have modifications whilst also capturing objectives or even repositioning. We also have Maul and Mithil, famous in the canon for being the TIE fighter who sent Vader spinning at the Battle of Yavin, and he is an offensive pilot gaining one additional attack dice when attacking at range one, so that gives you four dice at range one. Combined with two talents, he is definitely one to watch out for. And finally, we do have Howrunner, the Obsidian Leader herself, who is a great Swarm Leader, with her ability to allow a friendly ship at range 1 to re-roll an attack dice whilst performing a primary attack. This is a must-have if you are running a Swarm of TIE Fighters. Now, pros and cons of the ship. With a wide variety of options, the abilities of the TIE Fighters can slot into any role on the table you need and they range from 2 to 4 points, so you can feel comfortable fielding any number of these. While they are inexpensive, having only 2 red dice for standard attacks can be quite limiting, and it makes getting damage through on other small base ships a challenge, especially given that they don't have target lock as standard. All in all, the TIE Fighter is an iconic and fun ship to fly, suitable for all player abilities, although if you do decide to run them in a swarm, be prepared to practice those manoeuvres because you don't want to be bumpy. And another key tip as well, if you know which direction you intend to go for first, make sure you've got the lower pilot on that side. It does make it a lot easier without having to mark up ships. Next up we have another classic, we have the TIE Advance X1, more commonly known as Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. Although only seen for a short time in A New Hope, and with a brief appearance in the Rebels episode Twilight of the Apprentice, this ship is rightly feared by players standing across from them on the table. With a similar stat line to the TIE Fighter of 2 attacks, 3 evade and 3 hull, it does also come with 2 shields and the inbuilt advanced targeting computer allowing you to roll one additional attack dice and change one hit to a crit 
when performing a primary attack against a locked opponent. The TIE Advance does lose the evade action, but this is replaced by the target lock and also the ability to link a focus to a red barrel roll for additional maneuverability. The dial also has more blue options in the 1 and 2 bank and 2 and 3 straight to alleviate the stress you may get from linking the actions or doing the 3 talent roll. Now, with the TIE Advance, while you do have access to two generic pilots who provide a harder target for your opponent than the TIE Fighter, it's the two ace pilots that you'll most likely see as they are both very aggressive and will be set about hunting your opponents down. Starting with the least obvious, but no less impressive, Marek Steel, you're provided with a 5-point Initiative 5 pilot with an impressive loadout. The pilot makes great use of the ATC to force an opponent who has suffered a face-up damage card to draw 3 cards, then you pick the one to inflict, further increasing your chance of causing a direct hit or even a hull breach. Combine this with the 2 talent slots and a missile and you have a very scary ship. Now, as mentioned earlier, this ship is known as Darth Vader's TIE for a reason, and he is an incredibly powerful pilot in the game. With a huge loadout, he can be equipped with two force abilities. He comes with three force naturally, and his pilot ability allowing him to spend one of those to complete another action almost guarantees that he'll have all the tools he needs to cause some serious damage on his target. Combine this with his initiative six, and again, those force abilities that you can use to regain force or other crazy shenanigans, he is incredibly powerful and definitely one to be feared across the table. Now, this is a very interesting ship, and its main plus side is its inbuilt ability, which can be coupled with a number of upgrades to provide a serious punch, such as Dead Eye Shot and Marksmanship, to name a few. The lack of an inbuilt boost or the ability to give it an engine upgrade does hurt the ship and can cause it to be less maneuverable than some but you can counter this on top pilots with afterburners. With the generic pilot's limited loadout, it means they'll be likely overlooked by most players, so running a mini saw with them is not that viable at this point. Overall, you're most likely going to be going for aggression with Vader or Marek Steel. Now we're going to move on to the prototype of the previous entry. We have the TIE Advance V1, also known as the Inquisitor's TIE, and this was first seen in the TV show Star Wars Rebels. This ship is almost exclusively piloted by Force users, giving you access to a solid and cost-effective array of pilots. Whilst not a hardy ship with only two hull and two shields, it does come with three evades, the Force and a solid action bar, including Focus, Evade, and Target Lock. Add to this the barrel roll, or boost linking into a focus and you have some good maneuverability and modifications. Although you don't get an inbuilt ship ability with this platform, you get a very solid dial with access to a blue one turn and blue one bank, two talent rolls and a 4k turn ensuring you can quickly get to your opponent and then stick with them. Now this ship is a solid fast moving knife fighter able to engage quickly and duck out of an engagement. With most of the pilots having access to force abilities, this can open up some very interesting Alpha Strike possibilities, including equipping heightened perception on the generic Inquisitor to get that first shot and strip tokens, or even equip Malice to push some crits through. Now, looking at notable pilots for this ship, when talking about the entire Advance V1, you can't not talk about the Grand Inquisitor. This is a solid choice for any Imperial Ace player, and from the good old days of version 1 right through to now. Initiative 5 with 2 force and a solid upgrade bar and loadout. Possibility you can really kit the Grand Inquisitor out for causing serious chaos with your opponent. He comes with an ability perfect for all situations. By spending 1 force you can give yourself the range bonus when attacking at range 2 to 3 or stop your opponent's range bonus at range 1. The Grand Inquisitor really is synonymous with this chassis and you are likely to see him coupled up with other aces going after all of your big ships. Taking into account all that we have said, it's difficult not to like the idea of flying this ship. Nimble, force-powered and conservatively pointed, its limited hit points can mean that if one shot does go against you, it can take the ship off the board. The ship is definitely not for jousting, so you'll need to approach with caution and position yourself for just the right shot. Bear with me now, this is one of my favourite ships in the game. 
Since back in version 1, I've always enjoyed flying the TIE Interceptor. And with the release of Sky Strike Academy, you now get 10 different pilots to choose from, giving you a wealth of different options to pick. As you'd expect with a TIE based chassis, this ship doesn't come with shields and only has three hull, but what you get in return is one of the fastest ships in the game. You also get the auto thruster ship ability, allowing you to form a red boost or barrel roll after performing an action. And this can help you line up that perfect shot or get out of arc unexpectedly. While stressing yourself is seldom ideal, having access to all the basic two blue moves will mean that you're more than equipped to mitigate this and stay in the fight as long as you lead. Now, regular viewers will expect this, but I cannot talk about the TIE Interceptor without talking about Soon Tier Fell, the Ace of Legends. Arguably my favourite pilot in the whole of X-Wing, this pilot is feared and loved throughout the game. With his initiative of six and gaining a focus during the engagement phase when you have an enemy in the bullseye, which is made easier with the double reposition. Having access to two talents means you can really make the most of the bullseye with upgrades like Dead Eye Shot or Predator, and you can further enhance soon here with a shield upgrade for that extra survivability, or afterburners for even more action economy. A Sky Strike also provided an interesting pilot in Sienna Re, another initiative six to add to the Imperial ranks. Her ability is very interesting, and at first made some opt against her, Gaining a stress token when destroying your opponent doesn't sound like a great thing. However, when leading the charge, she's ideally suited to soften up your opponent first. So definitely worth having a look at running in a swarm or with other Imperial Aces. Now, this ship, like most ties, does not have the staying power for a joust, but it can run rings around most ships and you have access to a great set of abilities that you can build around or supplement your list selection. With a very solid die, you can get into the action and stay in as long as possible. Be aware of getting grouped up on, as you can easily get wiped off the board, but this ship is a dancer rather than a boxer. Now it's time to talk about the ship that takes all of the positives of the TIE Fighter and cranks that dial to 11. It's fast, powerful, and has a great action bar, and the ship ability to make any ace platform jealous we are of course talking about the TIE Defender. This ship is so feared that many Imperial players wish that you could take more than two, but it's highly unlikely that you'll ever be able to. With three attacks, three evades, three hull and four shields, what more could you ask for? Well, how about being able to take a free evade action when doing a speed three to five manoeuvre? That not good enough? Okay, how about a white 4K turn? Yes, you heard that right, a white 4K turn. This ship has access to all of the basic maneuvers, and if you don't like those red three turns, you can turn them white or blue for the other turns with the TIE Defender Elite config. You may lose the white K turn, but you do also get the advanced fire ability to replace full throttle, making your cannon or missile shots extra potent when followed up by a primary attack when you have a lock on the Defender. Now, we already mentioned him in this video with the TIE Advance, but you get a second option to run Darth Vader, and this time he is angry. You get to supplement this amazing ship with three force and the ability to change blanks to hits with the force. Although you can't use the force on the defense, you have the evade at your disposal. Now one of our favorite defender pilots is Countess Riad. She'll make all other maneuverable ships look positively pedestrian in comparison. With Riad, you can turn all of your straight moves into K turns by increasing the difficulty. Now, I know that doesn't sound too great, but that makes all of her K-turns white. So she would then have access to a speed 2 through 5 white K-turn, meaning that if you want to just zip back and forward in front of your opponent, you absolutely can. Now, we could talk about all of the named defenders, but you can only use two. So we'll leave the rest for you to have a look at on your own. Now, as we've already mentioned, there are many positives with this ship, but the biggest negative is the fact that you can only field two at a time. They are a big investment in points, so unlikely you're going to want to run two as you will need other things to support it, but it is definitely a possibility and this ship is just so much fun to fly. Now for a unique taste on the TIE Fighter chassis, we have the TIE Striker. It gives it an almost terrestrial feel with those overlapping wings, 
But this model is very cool, and I do like the fact that the wing can be moved so that you can make it look just right on the board. It is another classic Thai chassis with no shields, but you do get four hull, the adaptive ailerons ability, giving you a boost before you reveal your dial, allowing you to get in some extra interesting positions. Now don't panic about not having shields, you do have access to focus and evade, as well as a barrel roll to get out of arc and attack from the flank. Having access to a 1k turn means the ship can get into the fight and keep right on at it without potentially sacrificing the range bonus. Add to this the device slot you can get in amongst your enemies and cause all sorts of havoc. Now for pilots, if you're worried about those ailerons, then Duchess is the pilot for you, giving you either the option to ignore them or use the adaptive ailerons while stressed. At initiative five, this means you're going to be moving towards the end of the turn and have the flexibility of knowing where your opponent will be with perfect information. And this can be crucial. Do you prefer just raw attack with your ships? Then welcome Pure Sabak. Whilst you have one or fewer damage cards, you gain an additional attack dice. That's right, in the right situation, you'll be getting six attack dice. This is sure to be a thorn in the side of your opponents and provide an unexpected alpha strike even Lando would be impressed with. Now, as you said, the Aileron's boost is definitely a very welcome addition to this ship, but with the ship's fastest move being a speed three, it does lack that full charge ability to get across the board that you'd expect from the TIE Ranger ships. You'll need to practice with the ship to fully get to grips with the ailerons, as where it can get you and get you out of can be quite tricky and leave you vulnerable. Having access to a device slot on the ship does open up some interesting possibilities and make a good complement to either your aces or your bombers. Moving into the medium base ships, we have the Striker's big brother, the TIE Reaper. Introduced into the game as the crossover of version 1 and 2, this ship provided the Empire with a taste of a low-cost troop carrier. With a good selection of crew to attach this ship, can really up the ante for your squadron. Again, like the Striker, you get access to the adaptive ailerons with the ship, but with the extra advantages that you can choose, whilst not stressed, to use this or not. This ship can pack a punch with three attacks and some extra staying power with six hull and two shields. It does only have one of eight, so you'll need to position this right if you don't want to lose it quickly. The Reaper comes with a solid action bar with focus, evade, jam and a red coordinate. And this ship really has the power to frustrate your opponents by stripping tokens or giving you the extra potential divisive action just when you need it. If you're looking to capitalise on the jam action, then Major Vermeil is your pilot. Whilst the defender does not have a green token, you can change one of your focus results to a hit. Couple this with a sizable loadout potential and the ability to equip two crew means you can also equip a tactical officer to get the white coordinate and also someone like Gar Saxon or Director Krennic, even further boosting the damage output of your forces. Now, like most medium ships, the dial is heavily weighted towards the red end of the spectrum, which can be very tricky to combat with only five blue moves. But when used in conjunction with the swarm of ties as a support craft, this ship will really shine. Not having to use the ailerons makes this ship even more forgiving than the striker, and this ship is a solid support that can use its larger base to keep good pace with faster ships when required. Now for the only new ship released for the Empire Sith version 2, this ship looks like a giant TIE fighter, but it's so much more than that. We have the TIE Heavy, also known as the TIE Brute. This ship, however, is closer to the TIE SF with its rotating cannon turret, allowing you to blow past your opponent and still take a shot at them. The added versatility of the two convict cards really mean you can take this ship in any direction you want. With a whopping eight hull, this ship can take a hit, while having only two attack dice can seem painful, you can equip yourself with a cannon and then shoot this in line with your turret arc. Sync laser turrets, in fact, go quite well with this ship. You do get a very solid action bar with focus, reinforce, target lock, the red barrel roll, white rotate, link into red calculate. Now, you do also have access, as we said, to the two config cards, which give you some great ability, either reducing the difficulty of your three straight and bank maneuver, or allowing you to gain a calculate for each enemy, well, each enemy ship within range two to three in your firing arc. 
These will also give you more actions, both allow you to have a white calculate, the maneuver assist giving you the white barrel roll to red calculate, and the target assist giving you the white rotate to white calculate. If you want to make all of those actions white, you can just equip expert handling on there and suddenly you've got a medium ship barrel rolling with no penalty. Now, looking at notable pilots, you don't get many for this as it is a new release. There's only four, but Rampage is the one that we like the most here. Now, after you execute speed three to four maneuver, you may choose a ship in your firing arc at range zero to one. That ship gains one strain token or two tokens if you are damaged. You've got no shields and you've only got one evade, it's likely that you are going to have some damage on there. Now, pros and cons of this ship. Again, as we said, you have one evade and no shields. You are going to lose your health very quickly with this ship. However, you do have eight hull and it can pack a punch. This thing can be loaded out with quite a lot of options. You can put two separate cannons on there and rotating that arc to make sure that you still get that shot is going to be pretty powerful. Now for the final standard ship for the Empire, we're gonna leave the gaunt off and do that in a separate video as it covers so many different factions. But we do have the VT-49 Decimator. This is a cool, cool ship it's definitely there to hit hard and support all of your other ships with an interesting stat line of three red dice in a bow tie arc zero of eight 12 hull and four shields it is one of the healthiest ships in the game although it's not going to keep that for very long you do get focus target lock reinforce rotate and the red coordinate action on this ship now there are quite a few pilots on this ship, two that are very well known, and we're going to go with Captain Oiken as our notable pilot, as he is one of our favourite ships to use. Now, only initiative three, but while you perform an attack at range zero, treat it as an attack at range one. Now, when you couple this up with the Dauntless ability, after you partially execute a maneuver, you may perform one white action, treating that action as red. This is incredibly powerful. You are taking all of the benefits of being at range one and still being able to modify dice. Yes, you can't equip intimidation on there anymore, which was an auto include with Oiken, but it is still a very powerful thing to do. And with a decimator, you're likely to be bumping into things. It's big and it's lumbering. Now it's stat line for the action. It's dial is not too bad actually. It only has two reds, which are the hard one maneuvers. It doesn't have a turnaround, which means it can be difficult to disengage and come back in. But with the bow tie arc, you should hopefully be able to mitigate that quite handily. But the decimator is a fantastic ship and looks very imposing on the board works really well with a swarm. Now you do have to be aware that it has zero evades, so it can get whittled down quite quickly and making sure you've got that arc in the right position is always going to be key as you don't want to be wasting your action moving that arc to get the shot. But with an impressive set of upgrades, you can add multiple crew, gunners, device, torpedoes, talents, modifications. You can trick this out any way you want but guys that's our look at the standard ships that you can purchase for the galactic empire we will be back to cover the extended ships and look at the other factions in the meantime if you do enjoy what we're doing here at out of art gaming don't forget you can support us on patreon with the link in the description below but for now guys thank you very much for watching don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you next time.